Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Flagstaff E-Pro 19RD travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things and get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. When you're parking, no slides to worry about. What I want you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be. Of course, on your off campsite, uh, one toward the front, your water toward the front, your power back there. Big long 30 amp cord though. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you unhook your hitch, first thing you do is level your unit. You have a power tongue jack up here with a night docking light. Simply retract or extend to raise or lower. I do recommend jack pads, or excuse me, a uh, level, stick a level on the side of the unit, right in the middle of the unit. Uh, so you can tell when your unit is level. You have a manual override here. You have to remove the bike jack to get to it, but it, should you lose power, there's a manual override for a crank jack right there. Once you got your unit level, first thing you do, stabilize your unit. And you have these stabilizer jacks on all four corners. I hand down three quarter inch crank downs and just crank them down until you're taut. Now remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You're only going to bring these down just until they're taut. Uh, preferably with stabilizing jack pads. Get a four pack of jack pads from our store with your 10% off coupon. That's going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. I'll keep them from sinking. So again, these are stabilizing jacks. You should just run them down until they're taut. Go around the unit, run all four down. Make sure you don't lift the unit and change the levelness of it. Once you get all four of them down, we can go ahead and hook, hook up our water and electricity. Start with your power cord. Show you the way these new ones hook on. They go in at a little angle here. Red showing you've got power to the cord. A little angle here. Now I've lost the angle, there it is. Once they're on, you twist to the right, and then you lock this washer, power cord. At the end of this 30 amp service, should you need it, is a 30 to 110 adapter. You can plug in at home. Right here, that is. Get our power hooked up, let's hook our water up. Everything's right here on your little docking station, city wire connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Um, you always wanna to wanna to use this when you're putting water into your unit. Hook up your hose, hook up the water pressure regulator, but don't turn your hose on yet. Come over here to your hot water heater, and we're just gonna make sure that our drain plug's back in. Get that back in there nice and tight, then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Once your hose been on for a little while, you go inside, turn on your hot water. Hot water heater not on yet, but just turn on your hot water tap and that'll tell you when your hot water heater is full of water, shut that off. You can turn your hot water heater on from indoors. There is an on off element down here. Only turn this on down here if you're plugged into 110. Turn it on here as well as indoors. Up here, if your hot water heater is not working, come out here and look, this bubble may be up, just press down on it. It's a reset button. Lots of information right here that I've covered pretty much. 
Let's say we're going to use potable water. We're not going to use our uh, city water connect. We're going to go dry docking. Right here to the right of your power cord is your fresh water tank. Simply fill this with a hose. No need to uh, use your water pressure regulator. Open this up, fill it with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two, when you're on the inside, when you check your tanks, your battery, there's a button for your fresh water tank to tell how full it is. You can hold that down and tell when this is full. Just remember, when you're using potable water is when you're gonna wanna turn on your water pump. Don't use your water pump when you're using city water. It's already pressurized. Right, we got our water and power hooked up, ready to camp. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you around the rest of the outside of the unit real quick. Put the back here on the off camp side, you got this storage. Your potable water again. There's where you drain your potable water tank. Your power. Your direct black and gray holding tanks conveniently in one area to dump. Also have an outdoor shower out here. Your antifreeze inlet for winterizing the unit. Cable inlet. Black tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Cable and satellite hookup, or cable here, satellite over here. City water connect. Hot water heater. Pass through storage. The docking light. Your batteries, check your post now and then. Make sure they uh, haven't wiggled loose over time. Let me take your cover off your propane here. And your propane tanks here, you do have a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Your bike rack, jacket, actually lipper jacket has an extra video on YouTube that you can show how to use that bike rack. Prep for solar on the side. You can plug the solar panel in here. That'll trickle charge your batteries for solar. Your tongue down there has this foot or this wheel. Uh, there's a table for your grill out here, an extension for the jacket. The steps. The big awning. Outdoor speakers. This is a vent for your microwave. This is your furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of this, it'll get rather warm. Hey, low point drains for draining when leaving the campsite. So this elite griddle on this table uh, spatula and quick connect LP comes with your unit really cool griddle put it out here on this table as well as the other one quick connect LP right there for it there's a hand crank hole to bring down your spare tire and your storage it's successful from indoors on the back of your unit your ladder go up and check your seams Talk as needed, and your unit's also prepped for a fury on backup camera. The unit you purchase from our store sits on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for the unit. And then the storage here, that about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. All right, so coming up into your unit, first thing I want you to take note of, most importantly, is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Close your door. The reason they call them slam locks, they work best when slammed. Inside your entry doorway is where your 110 with GFCI reset is. Then up here on the corner is your control panel. So here's where you check your levels of your tanks. Um, your brand new battery, of course. Your fresh tank, this is the button I said you can hold in and tell when your potable water's full. Your black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Turn on your water heater here if hooked up to gas. Here if hooked up to electric. No tank heaters. Here's your awning retract. And extend, I'm gonna run that out real quick to show you how far to run that out. And you can control this whole RV with an app. There's the uh, barcode to scan for Google Play. Show you where the app is. Continue running your awning out. So you get your big awning light here, your porch light. So you're only gonna wanna want to run that out until this flap falls down to 90 degrees. You can see your black bar, that's how far you want to run it. 
And here, see, retract to bring it back in. Come around to the rest of your kitchen here. You have some individual lighting. Your stove here, this glass top makes an excellent backsplash. You have a panel light. Simply turn this gas on, hit your spark, and there's your flame. Same thing on the oven. Turn your oven on down here and light it here. Another 110 here. Underneath your seating here, this table will of course fold down and sit on these lips here, which I'll put it like that for travel. USB ports here. Underneath your fridge is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. You got a little variety there, 15, 30, 40. Recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. And just to the right of that access panel is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mentioned this is 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day and you're not plugged in, nothing charging your battery, disconnect your battery post, use battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. Coming up here to your fridge, Here's a little travels. Here's where you turn it on. Put on your wall is your inverter showing where your power is coming from. And this is your furnace. Except you turn it on, turn it up, and it'll kick on. Warmer being hottest. Your AC unit is here. You'll notice your furnace takes a few minutes to shut off after you shut it off, the fan anyway. Up here's your AC unit. Several levels. And back into your bathroom. Just want to mention in here, turn on the lighting. In here you have a hand crank open. Four level exhaust fan. Shut that off here. Another 110 in here. Maintain your plumbing as you would at home. Back behind that panel right there is all of your plumbing. Your television. Here's where you turn on your Wi Fi Ranger. And your, oh, it's set to Bluetooth. Sound system, let me switch it. Scan for a channel. Hide administration action comes So you play your music indoors, outdoors, or shut them both off, oranges off. Or you can play your music both. If you just touch that once, it'll be mute. If you hold it in, it shuts it off. So pop up port here for USB 110. And lastly, your smoke alarm is located back here. Make sure you quickly how to set this table back down. I find it easiest to set it over here onto one side. You see, you fold your legs in, Velcro it. Set your lip down, set your table down onto the black lips, and you can put your back cushions up here for a bit. Well, that about covers everything on the inside. Let's head on out like we're leaving the campsite. So, what I like to do first is shut off my interior lights from the panel, that way I can see which individual lights I need to shut off. Turn them back on, shut off your portion awning light. I'm gonna go ahead and run your awning the rest of the way back in. Coming up out of your unit, closing the solid step, you wanna make sure your exterior door is all the way open, otherwise this will catch on it. You see you do have adjustable feet on these. You simply press in on this and this will raise this and lower it. Open this and lock that. Lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn your handle. 
Bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Unhook any cable. Any water. Pick up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, we're gonna hook up the sewage hose. The first one you're gonna pull is your black handle. If you pulled your black handle, sounds like it's no longer draining, you're gonna come up here to your tank flush. Again, with your water pressure regulator, you're gonna hook this up and hook the hose up. And you're gonna go ahead and turn that on and leave your black handle open. Run it for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all the nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that, close your black handle, pull your gray handle. That's gonna be your cleaning waters, your sinks and your showers. Just to clean your sewage hose out for you. And we're gonna go ahead and go to our hot water heater. You can do this while draining. Open up this valve and it's gonna release all your hot water. Once that's done, then you can remove your drain here. If you're using potable water, you come here and pull that fresh water drain. And head on home. Jim, we thank you for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Flagstaff for many years to come. Happy camping.